pruned your apple trees yet, now is a great time to do so. Hi guys, I'm Chantelle from PeacefulLivingNH.com. Over here we're all about gluten from scratch, gluten-free cooking, gardening and self-sufficiency. And today I'm going to be showing you how to prune your apple trees. So first off, I want to start by apologizing for the wind. It's going to be really windy today. Actually, this whole week is going to be either windy or rainy. So um, I have to film a video and uh, I'm sorry, uh, I hope you guys can hear me. I'm gonna try my best so that you guys can hear me. So first, I have a few things with me here. I have um, my hand pruners, I have some bobbers so that I can uh, reach the long branches that I'm too short to reach. <laughs> you can also uh, use a ladder if you want. I also have a spray bottle with uh, alcohol in it and uh, every time I move from one tree to the other, I'm going to be spraying this the my pruners and loppers with the alcohol uh, to disinfect them and also if you are cutting any diseased branches you want to make sure to clean them clean your pruners really well before you move on to the next branch every time you cut a branch uh, so that you don't infect the other branches and um, co possibly cause a tree to die uh, so the first things you want to pay attention to when you are pruning apple tree first thing to tackle is either dead, diseased, or damaged branches. So that's the first thing I'm going to be looking for. To start, I'm going to spray my pruners. One thing to note before I start on uh, pruning is that apple trees prune on a uh, fruit on old wood not prune, but fruit on old wood. Uh, so you don't want to prune your old wood, otherwise you're going to be cutting off a, um, possible fruits. So let me show you first what the fruits would look like as buds, I suppose you would call them, or blooms before they, before they bloom. Uh, just so that you can recognize them, um, so, that, so that you can recognize them and not accidentally prune them off and end up with so these, your, um, fruit, your fruits are going to have a small stem sticking out of the apple and it's going to have a bud right over the stem. Each fruit is going to look like that. So that would be a leaf node over here and that would be a fruit like that. And it's, it looks very similar to a leaf node except the fruit but uh, is bigger and fatter than the, uh, than the leaf node. Let me see if I can find one that can easily differentiate between it. It's a little hard to tell on this, but I hope you guys get the point. So there's another over here, you can see the stem. I hope you guys can see the sun, the weather is really not ideal for filming but um, I'm trying my best over here so you have this like a uh, little tiny stem kind of like a collar almost and and then a, a bud right over here so that's how your fruits are gonna look like okay so you can see right here the deer were chewing on the branches so what I can do to fix that if I want to um, is I'm gonna look for a leaf node or a bud um, to prune the branch right above so this one is sticking out out of the apple tree so away from any inner branches and it's not going to it's not heading in the direction where it's uh, uh, of another branch or inside the tree so when I cut over it it's going to branch out in this direction or away from the apple tree if I were to choose a node like this like this one over here for example so on the inside over here where my pruners are there's a node if I turn the camera you guys can probably see it now right here 
So that would create a branch if I cut over it over here. The branch is going to head in the direction of the tree. And what that will do is um, it's going to cause mold and mildew to grow in the tree. It's also going to uh, cause a lot of bugs to nest inside the tree and it's hard to see them. You're going to have a lot of leaf growth in there and possibly less fruit growth. The Apple trees are also uh, known to have issues with blight, so to prevent blight you want to give it as much air as possible. So if I consider this damaged, I'm going to cut the branch right here over the leaf node. I should have cut it a little bit higher actually. Um, I'll do another one and show you a close-up so that when it branches out it's going to branch out in this direction away from the apple tree. Okay, so now I have this one over here. It's all chewed on. Um, so this branch is heading in that direction and is going to hit another branch that's facing me over here. It's going to hit that branch right here. So if I cut it right here, what's going to happen is that this branch is going to be encouraged to grow in that direction and it's going to again crisscross with another branch and cause um, mildew and diseases to grow in the tree. So um, I think I'm going to cut it right over here for now. I don't want to cut too much because if I cut too many, if I cut too much off the apple tree also, I'm going to cause a lot of water sprouts which are um, branches that stick up um, out of the uh, apple tree uh, headed vertically and those branches are not going to bear any fruit until after several years and also they're going to cause a lot of inner growth and that inner growth is again going to cause mold, mildew, disease, all that stuff. So um, my branches are pretty good. Maybe I might want to reduce this, the length of some of them so that um, the apples aren't too heavy on the tree. Actually, I see a really fat... I got distracted. I see a really fat uh, bud over here that's a fruit bud. Let me show you guys. So this one right here, you can see that is so obvious that this is a fruit. Sorry, my hair is in the way. Uh, you can see there's a stem and this giant... Actually, that is not a bud. I take that back. What is that? Weird. I don't know. These branches right here are sticking out a little bit too far, so I'm going to bring them in a little bit because in the summer the tree is also going to cause a lot of growth to come off the tree. So you can come back in the summer again and prune it. But right now I'm just doing a little bit of thinning on it, making sure that there aren't any damaged, like this one, and diseased branches. So actually I need to cut this one off. So I'm going to cut it uh, right here. This branch over here, if it's going to bear fruit right here, it's going to be really heavy and it's going to lean over and possibly cause the whole branch to break. So. I don't want to encourage fruits over here, so I think I'm going to take this whole branch a little bit back to here and have this go up and in the summer I'll come back and prune it to um, encourage growth in, an op in a direction where I want it to go. So I'm just going to cut it right here away from, a little bit away from the collar. Can you guys see this? So this right here is the collar of a branch and that if you cut right over right on the collar that's going to cause um, the tree to heal a lot slower and it's going to encourage uh, insects to come in and it's going to encourage disease. So what you want to do when you cut 
I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be cutting this branch, but when you want to cut, if you're cutting over here where the collar is, you want to cut a little bit above the collar so that uh, the tree has a chance to, the branch has a chance to heal uh, a lot easier. So I'm going to cut over here a little bit away from the collar. Actually, <laughs> I did a mistake because I cut a little bit too close to this branch. I don't want to break it. There we go. See my face. Okay. There's so much fruit. There was so much fruit on this. Yeah, but it's going to cause the tree to bend over. I'm having a hard time seeing myself in the camera. It's really bright. So I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. But over here, this branch um, is a little bit damaged and it's too tall. I don't want it to keep going up. direction of another branch. So this one right here, you can see there's a bud right here. So I'm going to cut it right over that bud to encourage growth in this direction. So right now I'm going to show you the second thing that you want to pay attention to, which is the water sprouts. And then after I show you all these things, I'll prune the tree. Um, all of it and show you the end result. This growth right here, this growth right here is called the water sprout and that's the growth that shoots um, up and inside the tree and that is going is not going to benefit me in any way and again that's going to cause a lot of leaf growth on the inside of the tree and it's going to call, cause mold and possible fire blight and other diseases and uh, it's going to encourage insects to nest inside the tree. So I'm gonna cut it right at the bottom, again, right over the collar. If you have, uh, you might end up with also uh, s some uh, suckers, I think they're called, that grow at the bottom of the tree. You wanna cut all those up. You don't want, you don't want to encourage the growth of uh, those suckers. Um, because they're, they're going to form obviously branches and almost trees that are coming up from uh, around the tree. So you want to cut those off and uh, you don't want to cut more than 30% of the tree. You don't want to prune, let me rephrase that, you don't want to prune more than 30% of the tree because that's going to cause a lot of water sprouts to come up. Uh, like on my pear tree, which I had to uh, prune it a lot last year, I ended up with a lot of water sprouts. So this year I'm going to prune it a little gen more gently, but I do have to prune all the water sprouts on the inside. So our technique with pruning our fruit trees over here is to, especially with the pear and the apple trees, is to cause them to go um, in a vase shape or in an open concept and low so that it's easy for us to harvest them um, but we are encountering a problem with that and that is deer they're coming and eating up a lot of the branches because we have the branches low where we can easily reach them uh, so I need to find a way to protect my trees I don't know maybe an electric fence or uh, maybe I might have to just cause the trees to grow a little bit higher that's not something I'm uh, super happy about, but I don't know. I have to think about it and see what we can do. So now I'm going to finish the pruning the trees and I'll get back to you and hopefully show you the end result. One more thing that I forgot to mention is that if you have branches that are crisscrossing each other uh, or rubbing against each other you want to prune uh, one of those branches away and usually you want to prune the weaker one and you want to keep the one that's a stronger one unless for whatever reason you think that pruning the stronger one is the best option but in most cases you don't want to prune Chris 
cross with other branches. So you can see this is the first apple tree that I finished pruning and I'll show you the difference between it and the other apple tree that is not pruned. Can you guys see the difference? So the idea here is to have a lot of airflow inside the apple tree because our area gets a lot of rain spring all the way through fall we don't get as much rain in the summer but we do get some rain in the summer so we want to provide our trees with a lot of airflow in the middle so that we can prevent um, mold mildews and diseases from happening and to give our fruit trees the best chance of survival uh, we try to implement this um, pruning method for a lot of our fruit trees as um, to the to those that apply it applies to you can also prune pear trees the same way you prune apple trees pear trees also fruit on old wood as well so you can apply the same method and also for the pear trees you can see that the fruits would look the same as the uh, apple trees let me show you we have a pear tree over here that i haven't pruned yet let me show you just a second so you can see all the fruit that this pear tree is going to bear you can see all these little uh, nodes that will soon be fruit on this pear tree but you can also see all the water sprouts in the middle that I think I'm probably gonna be pruning today before I even prune the next apple tree because I think this is very important to do I'm probably not gonna do much pruning on this tree over here uh, except for the water sprouts and if I see anything that's damaged or diseased then I'll take it out. So basically that's how you prune an apple tree. Uh, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. If you are getting ready for spring and you have a vegetable garden I have a video right here on how to prepare your garden for spring for a successful garden this season. And um, that's how you prune apple trees. I hope you, you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again next time.